What's going on? Hope everybody is well. Um, yeah, one sec. Hope everybody's good. Um, waiting for a couple people to join and we'll get this started. I am really excited to talk to you guys today. I really need to talk to you guys today. I've had a very rough few days. <laughs> Just trying to like, it's all about the assimilation and understanding people. It's been a little bit of a rough one. So I thought that I would, uh, I thought that uh, there's such a lag. Um, I thought that I would have a wonderful time with you guys today because I usually do. So I'm really looking forward to chilling with y'all and reacting to some of the things that you guys uh, threw out there that you wanted me to react to. But let me just tell you, hi, Chris. Thanks for joining. Um, let me just tell you that I've had, a, like I said, I've had a rough couple of days. <laughs> uh not gonna lie. I have just been I've been a kind of flaky at work. Hi Michael. Doing okay. <laughs> um oh thank you, Chris. Yes, that's one of the things we're gonna talk about. Um that we hit over a thousand subscribers on the channel. Woohoo. Woohoo. Um and yeah, so I'm having a little bit of a rough couple days. I'm just getting very exhausted from being uncomfortable all the time and thinking I know what's happening and not <laughs> and feeling like I, I have a handle on things and then realizing I don't and uh, people at work are being very British because obviously, and some of the British stuff kind of annoys me, not gonna lie. Like the biggest thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is not a lot of people like to be direct. Like if I make a mistake, they'll go and tell my manager or the person training me, they won't like come to me. And I'm just used to that kind of hands-on so that I can know what my mistake is and learn from it and it gets cemented in my brain. That's kind of just how it works. But anyways, I'll figure it out. Don't forget to like the stream, you guys. Make sure that you send in all of your uh, chats and all that kind of stuff. Uh, can't wait to talk to you. Like I said, I need you all today uh, to cheer me up. <laughs> Um, let's get started. So yeah, the first thing we hit a thousand subscribers, y'all. How exciting is that? I haven't looked at my count yet today, but it's at 1,086 subscribers. Do my little happy dance. Very excited, um, overwhelmed a bit, to be honest. I never thought I would ever get to a thousand. I thought maybe 10 people might be interested. Maybe 10. And then if you add like my family, if they were involved, you know, maybe 20. <laughs> but this is super exciting. Um, I can't wait. I can't believe it. I, I can't wait to see what kind of perks that uncovers. Um, so I'm such a newbie and boomer at all this stuff, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to keep doing my thing, but I'm just really excited. And I just want to say a really, really big thank you to you guys, because I know a lot of, um, a lot of you guys that joined me on the stream are just tried and just, is it tried and true? Is that the expression? I think so. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> um, you guys have just, you've just stuck with me and you, you've 
helped get those views counts up and you've been sharing and you've been commenting and liking and all that. And, you know, you helped make this community what it is right now and hopefully we can grow it together. Um, you know, with your help, we can sustain this for longer than just a couple months, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, but I'm just gonna keep doing my thing and, uh, you know, keep listening to you guys for the pros and cons and go from there. But a big, huge, heartfelt thank you to all of you who've been joining me on the live streams and interacting with all the posts and, and commenting and all of that. I am so grateful. I never thought I'd get to a thousand subscribers. And the coolest thing about it is we're celebrating the channel's birthday, right? We're turning a year officially from our first video upload this weekend and we get to do it with a thousand subscribers. So it's a really, really cool milestone and it's a cool way to celebrate and it's one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. So I really appreciate it and I'm very grateful and thank you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, enough of the mushy stuff. Let's move on. <laughs> Today's gonna be a reaction day because you guys seem to really enjoy doing that with me. And uh, I really enjoy it. So I'm thinking, uh, so I did post out that, put a post out there for y'all and you've sent me some suggestions, some comments, uh, you put in, you put some suggestions in comments as well. So I just picked the first three that seemed interesting that weren't, I hope, they're not too like too much of the same things, right? So we could just kind of get a little variety going. Um, and we'll see how it goes from there. <laughs> uh, all right. And of course, send in your chats and any questions or anything like that. Make sure you're interacting. And again, if you haven't hit that like button, make sure you do so. And without further ado, let's get this going. Welcome to Watch Monkey UK, and today we're discussing down our picks for the top 10 things America stole from Britain. Yes, yeah, it's a great story. Before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. So this is the classic down takes the top 10 from American culture which actually originated in Britain. While standout British inventions are subject for another list, today's countdown tackles typically American things. In the US, as the UK, the back door. <laughs> Number 10, Apple Pie. Shut up! As American as Apple Pie, right? Yeah! Sweet treat is a staple on US dining tables. The British were the first to serve it, way back in the 1400s. A popular dessert throughout European history, the Dutch and Swedish styles also inspiring the food worldwide, it was taken across the pond with the 17th century colonists. Since then, Apple Pie took on a standout symbol of US patriotism. As well as a central component to its community. That actually makes so, sense. Like Dutch. <laughs> Way before those people turn this institution into a creamy dish to laugh them, and long before the YMCA swept across America, the Young Men's Christian Association was the brainchild of influential philanthropist George Williams. Dismayed by where he was in the century of London, Williams conceived the now famous charity at a safe place. While the movement's worldwide influence is something to be proud of, it's difficult to imagine Williams joining in to the dance music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chocolate bars. Chocolate bars are often taken stateside. But before Mars, Hershey, Milton Bar all came to group, there was one boy in Bristol making some steps to make history. Joseph Fry finalized the first mass produced chocolate bar in the mid 1800s, around the time that the Dutch developed their chocolate press. Fry's chocolate cream hit shelves in 1866 with a famed Pompey filling, and the bar can still be bought today. John Cadbury quickly followed suit, while the likes of Hershey didn't arrive until the late 1890s. Number seven, sandwiches. Can I have a Okay, 
Wait, was that was that Friars? Friars was called. You guys, you can still get that nowadays. Just curious what it tastes like. I never thought that the sandwich was exclusive to America or an American invention. That's kind of weird. Yes, the office. Fries, you can still get them. All right, I'm going to try that. I really like Cadbury, though, so. Wait, that originated in Britain? That makes total sense. That also makes sense. No shit. I've actually heard that about baseball. That makes sense. Number one, the star spangled banner. Finish with a final salute to great British influence on American culture. With the US national anthem is sung to the tune of an 18th century English drinking song. Baltimore wordsmith Francis Scott Key takes full credit for the lyrics, but the melody was written by John Stafford Smith, a Gloucester born composer. Oh, the right. song is it was. What? Okay, I guarantee you there are very few people in America that know that the Star Spangled Banner tune is like a British singing song. What, what song is it? I want to see if I can find the song. Because that would be fun. I would love to hear it. My favorite British telephone, the television program of all time, or right this second. <laughs> um, 
my favorite British tele television program of all time is probably the Fast Show. I really like the Fast Show. I think it's hilarious. It makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, I have actually haven't watched it in a long time, but I really like it. I like Ricky Gervais's original Office. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV, so it is hard. I'm watching Peaky Blinders right now, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, what other? I don't know if that's an English. I know it's like set in England, but I don't know if it's like an English show. Um, yeah, I don't really watch a lot of TV. I like uh, fast show. I like Little Britain. Um, oh, Faulty Towers. Nope, Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers is my all-time favorite British show ever. I used to watch it in America all the time. I remember when I used to stay up late, like on my summer vacations, it would be on like channel 11 or nine or something like that at like one o'clock in the morning. And I used to watch it. It's awesome. I love it. Love John Cleese. Thinks he's hilarious. The entire cast is amazing. And I watch it all the time. And it still makes me laugh, even though I've seen every episode like 2,000 times. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Faulty Towers. I can't believe it took me a second to think of that. That's kind of embarrassing, actually. What is the pub song? All right, let's find this. What is the pub song that the Star Spangled Banner is based on? I'm trying to get it on the TV, but it's not working for some reason. YouTube's being a pain in the ass. This isn't the real lyrics. They're making fun of it. Are these the real lyrics, y'all? It can't possibly be. I mean, I didn't know that, but it doesn't surprise me because most of our patriotic songs from that era stem from somewhere else. And like uh, My Country Tis of Thee is to the tune of God Save the King, which is your national anthem. So it doesn't surprise me in the least. Um, the light bulb thing, though. I don't know, that's a big point of pride, not just because it's an American thing, but Thomas Edison did that in New Jersey, where I grew up. So, and Edison was like two towns over from where I grew up. So, and uh, that one hurts a little. <laughs> Are you guys still with me? Yay. Um, okay. This one's going to be a little bit more pers personal. Don't take it as a criticism. It's not. I'm not going to take it as a criticism either. Um, American problems that Europeans don't understand. What's up, Internet? 
I just... Yeah, I don't know why this is playing, but the other thing wouldn't play. That's so weird. Okay. Uh, am I missing America? This week I am very much, I've been homesick the last two weeks. Um, last week I was homesick just because I was feeling kind of like isolated and lonely. Um, this week it was, it's more about like, I'm just feeling so uncomfortable this week. And so just like out of my element and it's just, you know, I'm just yearning for something more familiar. Um, to where I don't have to think about it. Cause I literally have to still have to think about like crossing the road and stuff. Cause it's just not second nature to me. And it's just, it's a lot, it's just really exhausting. Cause I always have to be on. Um, so this week has just been really, it's just been, I've been making a few mistakes at work. I've been a little bit stressed because the person I'm replacing is leaving soon. So like that resource is gonna be gone. And it just, so it's just kind of, made everything a little bit, you know, more heightened, but I'm always going to miss it, but I made the right choice. I am with you the rest of A, I come in B. Sorry about that. That was absolutely necessary because the last time I dared to compare Europe to the U.S. of A, I nearly got killed in the comment section because I happened to live in LA. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the video. Today we're talking about things that Europeans don't understand about America. First thing we're gonna look into the obvious one, and that is taxing. You see a price in a store, but that's not the end. No, no, you have to keep in mind that that is without taxes. For example, I only had $10 to my name, and I needed to buy a few things to survive. And I calculated down to a cent, and then I got to the register. They say $12.55, and I'm like, but how? I don't need, you know, no, it's fine. I'll just put water. I, I'm sorry. I can't. She's annoying me. I can't. Sorry. I'll, I'll, let me do something else. I mean, I would be more than happy to <laughs> watch something like that, but that woman was annoying me. How about uh, questions Brits have for Americans? If you guys have more suggestions, you can put them in the chat. Chris, are you saying, oh, yes, to Faulty Towers? I hope you are. I think you're my boy. What is All right, ready? Here we go. Does jaywalking differ from state to state? Yeah. Assume, assume any law is different from state to state, particularly when it comes to, like, traffic, driving patterns, roads, any kind of like transportation based um, thing. It's gonna, it's gonna vary from state to state. Most of the, most of the time the states have that um, realm. The only thing that the federal government has is any kind of federal roads, which would be any kind of road that goes between states. So in other words, for an example, I should say, um, route one is a highway that goes from I think Vermont all the way down to Florida and that is maintained and regulated by the federal government because it's interstate it goes through many different states but you know if a road go if a highway goes from highway motorway goes from the north the top of New Jersey to the bottom of New Jersey then that's regulated by New Jersey local roads are also regulated in those uh, in those realms but so I would I believe jaywalking is probably regulated in the same uh, way. Jaywalking is one of the dumbest rules I've ever heard in my life. For those of you who don't know, jaywalking is when you don't cross at a corner or in a crosswalk. So like if you cross in, you know, 
in the middle of the street, to the other side of the street, even though it's safe, there might not be any cars or anything. Technically, in most cases, you can get a ticket for that. It's so stupid. We're all adults. Like, if we feel like it's safe, we should be able to cross the street. It doesn't matter where. I love that I can do that here. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't have to think about it. Um, it's just one of those stupid rules. Jaywalking is, is stupid. Is that, that's yet to faulty towers? Yes. Thank you, Chris. All right. Questions, Brit Tap for Americans. What is your absolute obsession with red cups? They're in all of your films, all of your shows. Red solo cups, yeah. Right. Why is your bread so sweet? It's disgusting. Why in the open, not on anymore? Why do you have massive gaps? In the doors of your toilet people. <laughs> Everybody can see right in the toilet people. Why, why? Why you pronounce flat like what? And why you pronounce caramel like caramel? And why you pronounce herbs like herbs? Brad and H. <laughs> why do you have to make everything bigger? If you make cars bigger, it means you have to make engines bigger, which means you have to make your roads bigger, which costs you loads more money. Can we trade the Oliver for Madonna? <laughs> When you guys say, I'm so excited, are you actually excited every time? Why do you pronounce Z as Z? Do we really need to kind of standardize these things? Also, if you spell things like organized with a mess rather than the Z, that would be too. <laughs> Why do you use chip and pin? Why do you view Europe as a single country? It's a weird thing I just kind of thought with, you know, Silicon Valley and all that, and just have that kind of view of being ahead of the tech curve. Why are your plugs so crap in that? Plugs are crap. I do a whole video on that. Why is your bacon so big? What do you call the wrong thing with biscuits and gravy? Gravy is like meat, juice, biscuits, and cookies. Putting them together doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. Bis American biscuits and gravy are the fucking bomb. They're so good. Biscuits in America, in case you don't know, are like a, almost like a bread roll, but it's really buttery and it's a little bit more flaky. And... Um, you, what you do is you cut it in half, you open it up, and the gravy is not like the brown gravy like you guys have here. It's like a, a, a cream-based sausage gravy with like bits of sausage in it and everything, and you coat it over the biscuits, and it's fucking banging. It is so good. Um, understand why you guys don't get it, but if you're ever in the States or you ever find an American restaurant or something like that that serves something like that, try it. I don't know if it'll be any good, like, if an American restaurant over here serves it because it's, like, an American Southern thing. Um, but it is so good. So fucking good. Um, it's kind of like a scone, but it's butter, more buttery, and it's not um, – it's kind of, like, more uniform. You know, it's like a scone – I don't know. Yes, yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of, like, more flaky. Than a, than a scone, and it's definitely got a more buttery flavor to it than a scone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so good. It's so good. When we were in Savannah, Georgia, which is south, it's just above um, Florida, for those of you who don't know, um, we had biscuits and gravy from a, a home-style like diner, and it was the best I've ever had in my life. And even the rest of my family was like, this is fabulous. And the first time I had it was when I went to school in West Virginia. And I was like, this is so fucking good. I can't believe it. And mm, I love it. I haven't been able to perfect it on my own yet. But I should just keep trying until I get it because I love it. It's worth it. Thank you for indulging me on that one. Oh, that was it. I didn't realize that was over. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We sound like Oliver Twist. <laughs> we, I've been told we usually sound posh when we try to do a British accent. Um, uh, the bacon is very, very different. Definitely. Um, the ZZ thing, 
I mean, the herbs and herb thing, yeah. Uh, we have that discussion in our family a lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, some of that stuff is funny, though. Oh, we should slow down a little bit so you could take a little, like, we could react a little bit more, but no worries. Do people pronounce it scone? Scone. I, is that, it's an accent, it's an accent thing, right? Probably. Never, ever heard it pronounced gone, though. It's funny. Do I like Monty Python? If you do, have you seen Monty Python live at the Hollywood Bowl? I have not seen Monty Python live at the Hollywood Bowl. I really like the movies. But some of the TV show... I just don't, some of it's hilarious, but some of it I just don't get. I don't know if it's a period thing because it was, I think it was the 70s it was out, right? Um, it, maybe it's like a political thing, you know, that's like, because sometimes they reflect it on like British lifestyle. And of course, I, I don't know all of that. It might, I might find some of it funny now, but uh, I remember the first few times I saw it was in America and I didn't really get it. It was before I met my partner and everything. So um, I was having trouble really getting it. I should probably try to watch it again now. But uh, I love the movies. Love the movies. Holy Grail and uh, The Life of Brian. And actually, my daughter just saw, watched The Life of Brian for the first time a couple weeks ago, and she loved it. So we're very excited. So Monty Python is kind of like a... I, I just... I really want to like it because I like a lot of the stuff that they do outside of the TV show, but I have a hard time. But the Hollywood Bowl thing, I'll look that up and watch it because I'm probably going to like it. Is it a live show? I would think it's probably a live show. Eggnog is not a thing. You guys don't have eggnog here for Christmas? No, you don't, do you? China. Yeah, you're right. We didn't have any. I never even saw it in the stores or anything. Eggnog's disgusting. The only thing that uh, eggnog is good for is if you put bourbon in it. <laughs> put some bourbon in it, then it's good. Otherwise, it's gross. I hate it. <laughs> is that the scone thing? Is that from Monty Python? Is that what you're doing? Oh, I wish I was in on the joke. Um, I'm trying not to curse that much this stream because someone asked me not to. Someone said that I curse too much. And it can be off-putting. I mean, I am who I am. But <laughs> I do curse a lot. I'm from that kind of area. Um, I wanted to, oh, here we go. Yeah, this is it. So this is, um, and others like it are brought to you by the this one, this video, somebody sent me, why is American patriotism so weird? I thought it would be kind of fun to do with y'all. It's not a Monty Python thing. So I know they do skit on spam that my dad loved because he loved spam. Um, but he loved that skit as well. So that's why I thought maybe it was like a Monty Python thing, but obviously. I'm wrong. <laughs> just add it to the list of things I was wrong about this week. <laughs> I'm just playing. It's fine. Uh, here we go. I'll turn the volume back up. This episode and others like it are brought to you by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help support this channel, Spam and the Pirate Sketch. And get early access to every video. See some of the show. See, some of the show of Monty Python I really like a lot and I get it and it's hilarious. There's just some of it that I'm like. And I don't know if it's just that I'm missing the joke or I just don't find that part funny. Because there is some British humor that I don't find funny at all. That my family will be rolling on the floor in laughter and I'll just be like, okay. So I don't know if it's me, the humor or what, but, but I love the movies. And all those guys, I think, are really, really good. 
Com slash second thought. To a non-American, driving down roads lined with American flags, past people dressed like this, past fields <laughs> where hand on heart, Americans sing along to the national anthem or even the most forgotten little league game, and past bars where a USA chant is on a hair trigger is all very strange. Every Ford commercial in this country is about <laughs> the US is sick as hell. Every bald eagle is swole. Every beer is a gun. And a kid just pledging allegiance to the flag is a heartwarming story on national television. In no other country in the world is there such a widespread emotional attachment to the symbols of a bureaucratic government structure. It's incredibly strange, but I get that a lot of patriotism is just having fun. For a lot of people, it's like wearing your team's colors to a game. It's a good time. The problem is that that's not all that patriotism, or its defense, is. Almost every week, I get an email calling me a traitor or anti-American scum. For some reason, in this country, good faith criticism almost always triggers this knee-jerk reaction that the person raising their concerns, or more often just advocating for their own self-determination, hates America. Let's take an example. Here's an email I got from someone who probably genuinely believes they love their country and thinks what they're doing is a justified defense. And you know what? Let's give this viewer the benefit of the doubt. If you wholeheartedly believe that someone hates you and or the place you call home, it's not entirely unreasonable to get angry with them like this. But here's the thing. If you really want to label yourself patriotic, this kind of approach is completely counterproductive. Think about it for a second. If you care about your country, you should be among the first to call out problems when you see them. If you love your country and your fellow Americans, you should want to fix those problems, not blindly defend them. This kind of behavior isn't patriotic. It's ignorant. All those quote-unquote traitors are doing is bringing attention to problems that all of us should want to solve. There's nothing un-American about caring for your unhoused neighbors. No. All right, I thought this was, I didn't think this was going to be that serious, so I'm not going to watch the rest of it, but <laughs> that guy looked hilarious, and I have actually seen lots of people dress like that. And now with the Trump, with the Trumpers out, you know, supporting the campaign and everything, they have Trump's face on their shirt and they have Trump's face on their hats and they're wearing scarves with his face on it. It's insane. Americans definitely take their love of their country to a level that no, one, no other country that I know of takes it to. Um, and I do agree that it can be extremely overblown at times. But, again, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because Americans get, just get force-fed that kind of patriotism. It's really, hard to, um, it's really hard to escape it. Okay. I didn't want to get too political today. Okay. Let's catch up with y'all. Try, give some of the 1960s British comedy programs a look. I will. I definitely will. I know you're really, you, you suggest a lot of stuff and I really, I enjoy most of it. So that's cool. Um, there were three films, three Monty Python films, right? What was the third one? I'm, I'm, it's escaping me. It was the Holy Grail. It was, uh, the life of Brian. And what was the third one y'all? What are the carry on films? Meaning of life. Yes. I liked all three of them. I love the, what's the carry on films? And I don't know what you're saying when you say sometimes you think they go ought. I don't know what that means. Do you know what a Trump is over here? Like a, are you, are you making a joke, wouldn't I? Hello and welcome, by the way. Uh, are you making a joke or are you really asking? Because I don't, I didn't even know there were Trump people over here. About 30 carry one over the top. What are these, are these shows, Chris, that I should try?
Nie no dobrze, ale może smak, bo wy... I don't know. I don't know what those are. Ot is over the top. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking duh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Duh. You guys want to rank city British cities from worst to best or see embarrassing mistakes that Americans make in England? What would you rather watch? Y'all tell me. Chris, you were killing me. I don't know what you're saying. Uh... Let's see. Let's do this. What is bullseye? Do you guys, what is bullseye? Does anyone know? I'm sure you, I'm sure y'all know. Sorry, that was a silly question. Can anyone tell me or explain it? What is it? What is bullseye, y'all? Quiz game with darts? All right, let's just see what this is. Let's try this. Are you not working all of this at end? There's a similar game called watching paint dry. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so, like, the point of the game is what, though? I guess it's to get the 100. I, I mean, of course, we only saw the clip, so it's, it's difficult for me to get the whole gist of the game. Um... His top phrase was smashing Molly. <laughs> um, the two Ronnies, Four Candles, that's the name of the episode, I think, right? And then Jim Bowen. Okay. You get nothing in this game for two in a bed. I don't know what you're saying, Michael. <laughs> I'm not trying to be difficult. I really don't know. <laughs> um... I'm happy to, I am happy to learn though. Yeah, I'm probably going to get copyrighted for playing this stuff, some of the stuff, because when we did the dad's army thing, I got copyrighted. I had to cut it out of the, when I uploaded it, but it's okay. It was totally worth it. And I've seen a couple episodes since, and it's really funny. Um... All right, I know these are funny and they make fun of Americans, so you guys will probably love it. No context, American politics. In one day and the cocaine was there. 
shot his hunting buddy in the face. I remember that. And I phone. Well, maybe a little Smith and Russ. This is, of course, the picture <laughs> of former President Ronald Reagan naturally firing a, a machine gun while riding on the back of a dinosaur. You'll notice a couple of important features here. Uh, first of all, the, the rocket launcher that strapped to President Reagan's back. And then the stirring, unmistakable patriotism of the velociraptor holding up a tattered American flag. Oh, we should. <laughs> That's good to show me. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. I don't go to order boneless tacos. I don't go and order boneless club sandwiches. I don't ask for boneless auto repair. Hillary is so corrupt. Can't find such a tour. So we're not gonna chill. In fact, it's time to drill, baby, drill down. You ready for a commander in chief who will let our warriors do their job and go kick ISIS' ass? I tried to reply to just one chat text, but I was checking the wrong thing. Something in a very difficult financial situation. <laughs> I was alone, yes. The whole night? Well, yes, the whole night. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. I mean, did you have any in person briefings? I don't find it funny at all. <laughs> Oh, he's a senator. That's one of our senators. I don't know what that last part was. Oh, American politics is such a fucking joke. Oof. Anyways. Two darts in the same number on the dartboard is called two in the bed. Oh, okay. If you throw darts and get two in the same bed, then you don't win the prize. Nothing in this game for two in a bed. But that guy hit three and he won a prize. But is it just that game? I don't know anything about darts, really. I do find it entertaining to watch, though. All right, let's see if we can find one more funny one, guys. All right, let's see how y'all feel about this one. This is George. He is ten feet in age. Hello. For this reason, George likes tea. He eats fish and chips. And he uses red buses. Hello! Because George is English, he likes to say these words. Splendid! Spiffy! 
Obviously, this is old. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, you guys like tea. But the bit, I used to think that the summers were dark and gray, but they're actually not that bad. Uh, the sun comes out a lot more than I thought it did. But it's not as warm. It is cold. And it is wet. Two in a bed may stop you falling asleep. Dude. I am so lost in this chat conversation with this live stream. You guys, I, am, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I'm trying to follow along. Freddie Starr being Ray Charles. Who's Freddie Starr? I, I feel like I should know that. I'm not cheating. Uh, I feel like I've seen him in something, but I will find that. The other variety show or something, I feel like I've seen him like do a couple different characters. He looks very familiar. Laurel and Hardy, best comedy duo ever. Oh my gosh. My dad loved Laurel and Hardy. And when we did our road trip last summer, we went to, uh, we went to the north of England. Uh, we went to... Scotland, we went, to, we went to Edinburgh, we went to the Isle of Skye, we did Hay on Wye, we did uh, like Nottingham, uh, Stoke on Trent, Manchester, and some places like that. And we were stopped, we were just stopped on the side of the road to get coffee, and they had a huge mur mural of Laurel and Hardy. And I was just, it was so cool. It just reminded me of my dad. I just thought that was really cool. You just reminded me of it. And I do, every time I hear them now, I think of my dad and then I think of that poster. And it was just really cool. And I hadn't seen anything like that in a while. They might be the best duo ever. They're pretty good. I mean, I don't know. In America, we have Martin and Lewis and they're pretty funny. So I kind of like Dean Martin. And Jerry Lewis. If you've seen, if you guys watch Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin, um, I will watch some of your suggestions. Deal? All right, that's going to be it for the reaction part of the video. I do want to talk to you a little bit just about the birthday anniversary celebration that's coming up. Don't forget, it is Saturday at 3 p.m. It's going to be a two hour live stream. We are going to do a lot of fun things. I'm going to be tasting some British snacks for the first time. Uh, we are going to be reacting to some of my old original videos and see uh, 
I'm pretty sure I'll be embarrassed. Um, and we're going to play a game where a trivia game. So we're going to ask a, a few questions about uh, some of my videos, details about some of my videos. And if you answer the question right and you answer it in the fastest time, then you'll get to pick from a challenge board where you get to uh, you get to pick one of the challenges for me to do live on the live stream. And I can't get out of it. And the challenges will be unbeknownst to me until that day. And the rest, my, my partner and my child will be coming up with those challenges. So you can guarantee they'll be pretty embarrassing and they're definitely gonna put me in some kind of uncomfortable situation that I normally wouldn't do. <laughs> that is how they treat me. But it is the British way. Um, so it's gonna be a lot of fun though. Uh, I have a couple things planned. So I want you guys to you know, go out and watch some of my videos bone up on some of the details because you have some trivia so you can answer the trivia and you can pick out these challenges for me to do. And uh, also, there's something else. Dang. Oh, where's my notebook? That's why I kept my notebook out. What was the other thing that I need you guys to do? Do. Where is it? I need to give, I need you guys to make some suggestions. I'm going to put this in a post uh, tomorrow as well, but make some suggestions of what your favorite moments in my videos are, because we're going to do like a top five or a top 10, depending on how many um, suggestions are made. I'm going to read it on the birthday uh, stream as well. Um, so you guys, you guys pick, put some suggestions out there. I'll compile them all and whatever the top five or ten are we'll read that um live as determined by all of you <laughs> um don't forget it's saturday at 3 p.m uk time this saturday the 20th of august august 20th for any of those u.s people that are watching there's not going to be a vlog this weekend because we're doing the live stream and barring any copyright infringements from youtube it's going to be posted um, the same day as, as, a, as a video. Um, but that's what's going on. Just your videos, not your vlogs. I'm not sure I understand your question, Chris. Of course I like Martin Lewis. That's my boy. You got it. Have you tried the food Welsh rabbit or learning cockney rhyming slang? I don't know Welsh rabbit, but Cockney rhyming slang, I have picked up a bit. Uh, my partner has been helping me with that because he's from this area. And a lot of his friends say it. Um, and I am learning it, but there's still a ton of stuff I don't know. So it is pretty funny. Um, you do short vlogs. Yeah, I do shorts, I do live uh, video, live streams like this, and I also do vlogs. And the questions are going to be about, uh, about all, just the vlogs, not the shorts and not the uh, live stream stuff. It's just about the vlog videos because there's just, there's a lot out, there's a lot of content out there. And I, I, I don't want to overwhelm anybody by saying, thinking they have to watch everything or whatever. It's just supposed to be fun. Um, just to see if you really, so that you guys can pick these challenges. <laughs> Again, we're going to have a board of challenges. Then you guys will pick something from the board. If you answer the trivia cor correctly and you're in the fastest time. More details of that to come throughout the week on the post, the community post. So make sure you, uh, you know, are keeping up on that stuff because that's where I'm trying to communicate as best as I can with you guys and let you know everything that's happening. Welsh rabbit is cheese on toast. <laughs> I have not had cheese on toast, but I would assume it's like grilled cheese. Why would it be any different? I mean, the cheese would be different, obviously. Um, 
you're hilarious though. So. All right, I'm gonna end it there. Don't forget Saturday, um, three o'clock UK time is uh, gonna be our birthday celebration. It's gonna be a party. It's gonna be lots of stuff. We're gonna be having a good time. Just come and join us. And I can't wait, you know, to celebrate with you guys. Um, we, I'm gonna make sure you pay attention to the community post for the next few days and make sure that you put out there the, your top, your, your best, what you think are my best moments or what you think are the funniest moments or just the most memorable or things that you like the best. Um, I wanna try to compile some kind of list um, to read on Saturday as well. And keep these suggestions coming and the questions and I will see you on Saturday. Love you all. Thank you for joining me and I will talk to you very soon. Take care, have a good rest of your week. Bye.